East Asia chip makers see high-tech decoupling with China as inevitable. Given worries about the brisk pace of Beijing's military development, major stakeholders in the East Asian semiconductor supply chain appear to view a decoupling from China in sensitive technology-intensive advanced industries as unavoidable. To decouple or not, that is the question. Let's dive into the details and see how far the America-China chip war is taking the East Asian chip makers, also known as their relative allies. Welcome everyone to this channel and don't forget to subscribe. In recent years, the United States government imposed dozens of additional technology regulations on China, but none of them had a single overarching goal. Some aimed to combat risks to national security, some had more financial motivations, and some had unrelated goals like playing political or domestic games that had nothing to do with technology. Too often, American officials and experts use overly generic language to describe countering or reining in Chinese technological dangers and threats, omitting important objectives and trade-offs. We only started becoming familiar with the term trade war around 18 months ago, but by the end of the previous year, this had pleasantly evolved into a technology war. And by the first several months of this year, they had expanded into a much bigger economic conflict that now also involves trade, technology, human capital, foreign direct investment, capital markets more broadly, and as of last week, national currency policy. Almost more than a decade ago, the economies of East Asia were mostly focused on supplying exports to the West. Parts and components that went into products still mostly bound for the United States and Europe dominated trade within the region. The most recent OECD data, as shown in his working paper, indicates that this is no longer the case. East Asia is currently creating its own demand. Behind this development has been the enormous growth in Chinese demand, which has now surpassed the United States as the primary source of final demand for the rest of the region. East Asia is therefore somewhat more susceptible to escalating US-China trade disputes than is generally believed, and they are finding it hard to decouple with Chinese enterprises. The use of the phrase decoupling to characterize the trajectory of the US-China relationship in a casual, increasingly cavalier and, for some at least, apparently satisfying manner brings to mind the adage that words have the power to kill in international relations. In fact, decoupling has emerged as the buzzword in US-China ties, reflecting the relationship's evolving reality. A comprehensive list of new export restrictions aimed at China's chip and supercomputing business was released by the U.S. Commerce Department last month. China's capacity to buy and produce specific expensive semiconductors used in military applications may be hampered by the action. Although China produces certain semiconductors, its foundries are unable to produce the most sophisticated logic devices. With the exception of American software and equipment, Beijing primarily depends on Taipei for the cutting-edge semiconductors required to upgrade its military. In order to strengthen economic security and prevent a potential worldwide chip crunch in the case of a conflict between Taiwan and China, the United States is leading the effort to form the Chip 4 alliance with Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan. The relationship is currently in the worst condition it has been in for a close to 50 years. But despite this, neither the US administration nor the Chinese government, at least at this point, are using the D word as part of their official language. According to US Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, the U.S. has urged its allies to abide by its export controls in order to prevent China from gaining access to sophisticated semiconductor technologies and apply comparable restrictions. Wang Meihua, Taiwan's Minister of Economy, stated that the limits only apply to particular chips used in cutting-edge industries like supercomputing and artificial intelligence, not the bigger market of chips used in consumer devices. Nearly 90% of the most sophisticated chips and 65% of the world's semiconductors are produced in Taiwan. These chips are utilized in nearly every piece of contemporary technology, including telecommunications and medical devices, as well as in the essential infrastructure that keeps society running. Fears about what could happen if China invaded Taiwan have been raised in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and supply chain problems in the semiconductor industry. After severe chip shortages, exacerbated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, severely hurt the automotive and other industries, the subject of supply chain's resiliency was discussed during the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, which ended Saturday in Bangkok. Japan, which once led the world in semiconductor production but is now lagging behind Taiwan and South Korea, plans to manufacture and market two nanometer generation chips at Rapidus, a new consortium that includes Toyota, Sony, and six other top corporations. 
a total decoupling from China is improbable, according to Mariko Togashi, a research fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London, who specializes in Japanese security and military policy. However, she predicted that selective decoupling in areas involving sensitive technology, such as precision-guided strikes, will advance. Formal negotiations for the 14-member IPEF, which excludes China but includes Japan, Australia, South Korea, and India, will begin in December. Lastly, any U.S. decoupling attempt aimed at persuading other East Asian economies to forsake stronger economic links with China will undoubtedly suffer since China has cemented itself as the center of the region's highly linked economy. Given the scale of the Chinese economy and how deeply ingrained it is in many aspects of the global economy, it is challenging for most of economies to entirely cut link with China. The official meetings to conclude this suggestion will take place by the end of the year. China is also likely to invade Taiwan by that time. However, no official news regarding that has been disclosed. With that being said, we come to the end of the video. Will this transforming Cold War stop by the coupling? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. To keep up to date about what's happening around in different countries, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about our latest content.